Good morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of St. John the Baptist in Lodi, California. We're glad you're joining us here today online. We will be beginning momentarily. Good morning, St. John's! Good morning. Thank you! Deacon Tom made a comment that I should make an announcement. I'm back. <laughs> I am glad to be back. And um, for those of you who don't know, I am the Reverend Betsy McElroy. I have been gone in South Africa for three weeks. Um, I had an amazing time. I can't wait to share with you all. I've been sharing a little bit as we've gone along online. And thank you so much for your interactions, your questions, um, and your thoughts. I've greatly appreciated that. I've been thinking about you all during the entire time. I have promised. Um, that near the end of September, I'm thinking, we'll do an after-church conversation um, where I'll do a little presentation of my time there, learning about the Arch, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, um, who I just fell in love with over my time there. So I can't wait to share more about that with you later. Uh, back to the work of St. John's. Today for worship, everything you need will be in this bulletin. If um, it says hymnal, you're going to pull out the hymnal that's right in front of you. It is clearly labeled. If something has an S, a number, um, hymnal S, and then the number, that's going to indicate those at the beginning of the hymnal. Two notes of our entrance hymn. The title is correct, Blessed Jesus at Thy Word, but the number is incorrect. So you'll want to go to 440 for that first hymn. And then our sequence hymn, which is uh, on page 5, the number is correct there. We're only going to do verses 1 through 3 for that. So, um, and Michael will kind of lead us out on that, so you'll know that we're going to stop at verse 3. I think those are all the um, beginning announcements that I have for you this morning. It is so good to see you. I welcome you here if you are new. Let us just take a deep breath, center ourselves in this space, know that God is present with us, and let us allow the music to prepare us for worship.
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. 
and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all the way, along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 34. I will read to the asterisk, and you will read after the asterisk. The eyes of the Lord were upon the righteous, and his ears were open to the Lord. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Do not remember to stand upon the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Almost 30 years ago now, I spent three months in the Philippines on sabbatical from my time working with church world service. I was blessed to have three guardian angels while I was there who looked over me, kept me safe, kept me from getting kidnapped, useful things like that. Ed Della Torre was one of those angels. Ed was a former Catholic priest who'd spent 10 years in prison for his opposition to the Ferdinand Marcos dictatorship. He directed the education for my foundation that helped to sponsor my visit. Ed is a brilliant, creative, and charismatic person, and was a wonderful guide to help me understand some of the complexity of Philippine life and politics. He's in his mid-80s now, but still a formidable figure in Philippine life, and working hard to still form another generation of Filipinos committed to creating a just and peaceful Philippine society. When I read this text from John's Gospel, and we've read a lot from this section of John's Gospel already, right? It made me think about Ed and the story that I heard about him when I was there. He had been in prison for several years and had been placed in a string of cells where they kept the political prisoners. He asked permission from the prison authorities to say mass in the cell. With some reluctance, they agreed, and he began regularly to say mass from memory, using the scraps of bread from whatever they served at breakfast. Others in adjoining cells could hear him, and they wanted to participate too. So at communion time, 
the sacrament was handed down the road through the bars, hand to hand to hand to hand. It nourished their spirits in deep ways. After a time, the prison authorities thought better of their decision and refused permission for any further religious services. Speaking about Ed, the head of the prison said, in his hands, the host is more dangerous than a rifle. Interesting. A striking comment. Almost as striking as Jesus instructing us that we are to eat his body and drink his blood. Why does Jesus talk so much about his body and blood? It's like he's going out of his way to provoke and challenge us. As Andy noted a couple of weeks ago, some took that language literally and thought Christians were cannibals. And clearly, folks hearing Jesus' remarks were taken aback at the time of Jesus as well. All of chapter 6 is a kind of a meditation on the Eucharist, founded on the conviction that Jesus is really present in the bread and wine. We don't know how. Jesus' language, shocking as it can be, is a vivid, vivid reaffirmation, not only of the sacramental presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, but of the reality of the incarnation itself, of Jesus, the Word of God made flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. The flesh and blood Jesus affirms who he is, and the profound gift he offers in the Eucharist, himself, really present to us and in us. He emphasizes flesh and blood because we are flesh and blood, fallible, fragile, and mortal. He invites us into communion. He promises that even as he is fully human, made profoundly evident in his death on the cross, that in his resurrection, we are offered eternal life in him. The bread and wine we taste today are foretastes of a divine banquet we can scarcely imagine. The dramatic imagery Jesus uses is something like a Zen koan or a paradox to shake up our routine assumptions about ourselves and the world. He's telling us that we are so much more than meets the eye, and that the horizon of our lives is vastly greater than we can even imagine. Jesus embraces our humanity even to death on the cross, that we might, through him, enter into divine life eternal life with God. Death does not have the last word, not in Jesus' life and not in ours. Which is why sections of chapter 6, this text included, appear as suggestive readings for funerals or services with the sick in our prayer book. When we are feeling most vulnerable, fragile, and frightened. These texts for centuries have been sources of consolation, promises that no matter how dark the hour or how dire the diagnosis, God is with us. No matter what happens, our lives in God are assured. Over the last two years especially, I've leaned on these texts in visiting the sick, burying our beloved dead, consoling the bereaved. Chapter 6 begins with the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. Later, Jesus recalls the manna that the Israelites received in the desert during their exodus from Egypt, bread from heaven to nourish the community. And as this entire section takes place in the time leading up to Passover. John the Evangelist 
is indirectly referencing the unleavened bread of the Passover itself, the bread of liberation. Jesus, the bread of life, through these associations grounds his remarks in the central salvation story of Israel, pointing to his own Passover on the cross. Bread of heaven, bread for God's people, bread to nourish body and soul, bread in every case that is shared. The communal nature of these references is key, for they are glimpses of divine life. Divine life is communal too, Father, Son, Spirit. That divine community, that's the life that Jesus invites us into. That's the life we glimpse in this liturgy. Our Sunday service, our prayers, our songs, our gestures form a highly choreographed drama, a ritual rooted in scripture and tradition that seeks each week to deepen our own sense of connection and participation in that divine life. Together, we get a taste, a glimpse of that. But it's not all future focused. The bread of heaven nourishes us for the work of God today, here in our midst in Lodi. Emboldened by that divine promise, Christ calls us to embody that love in our lives, to be his body and blood in the world, wounded in so many ways. That's the part that made the jailer of my friend Ed nervous. Not the assurance of a future heaven, but that inspired prisoners were renewed in their commitment to cast down the mighty from their thrones and to lift up the lowly, as it says in the Magnificat. The warden saw the promise of liberation in the Exodus story, the promise of God's love for all in the life and ministry of Jesus, especially the poor, as a threat a threat to a social and political order that systematically impoverished and oppressed millions for the gain of a tiny few. Today, as we receive the bread and wine, let us with open hearts receive Christ's extraordinary gift of life and purpose. May we always abide in that divine life and in our lives, in our choices, in our relationships, seek to embody Jesus, to be his body, his hands, his voice in the world. Amen. 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 Please stand. Together, let us profess our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed found on page six of our bullet. We believe in one God.
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of God's peace. Be with me, friend. Sorry, oh, sorry. You don't have to <laughs> September 1st, and it's also kicking off the season of creation. So we will be spending the month following um, focused on liturgy and the season of creation. Our creation care team is going to be uh, decorating and having some uh, information in the back. I think they're also participating in choosing our hymns. Is that correct? Did I hear that this morning? Uh, so it will be a season of creation here and focusing on um, our work in being stewards of that creation. 
One of the other things that we're going to be starting next week is we are going to live into the fact that we have children here. Um, I know that we have just a few, but we're going to start living as if we have many. And so on the first Sunday of each month, we are going to make those Sundays a little bit more uh, child accessible, with a child accessible sermon, a shorter uh, service overall. That will be starting next week, and then we'll continue on the first Sunday of each month. So if that is something you are interested in talking to me about, I invite you to um, come chat with me. And if you have children in your lives, I invite you to invite them to come on those Sundays. In the spirit of that, I know a lot, we have a lot of teachers in this congregation, and we have students in this congregation. And so next week, I would like to do a blessing of backpacks, bags, and things. Um, that are sending us off to do the work in the world of education and learning. Um, we are constantly being formed in this world. And so if you or somebody you love is going back to school, whether to teach or whether to learn, would you please, I do not have a list, I'm throwing this at everybody, nobody knows that I was going to say anything about this. Um, so uh, maybe we can create a list um, or let Penny know so that we can honor everybody next week who is going back to school. Uh, in two weeks, on the 8th, uh, Bishop David Rice will be joining us, and so I invite you to be here for that. We will be having some confirmations, receptions. It's going to be a grand day for that. Uh, uh, Deacon Terry Van Huss will be here with us as well as part of the Creation Care uh, Ministry through the diocese, and she will be doing a... Um, conversation, I think right after the, the service. So look forward to that. Speaking of bishops, we are starting a bishop search in the diocese. And there are two things we need your attention to for that. The first one is there is a survey that has gone out to the diocese. If you have not received that survey, um, and you need a link to it, please let Penny know and she can get that to you. Um, please fill that out. It is for all lay people and all clergy, and it's, to, it's going to help us create our profile that will go out to let people know what kind of bishop we would like to lead this diocese. So please fill that out. It is due by Thursday the 29th. So um, the due date is coming soon, and then it will shut down, and you won't be able to do that. It takes about 15 minutes, um, and just go through it and answer the things to your best. Don't overthink it. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Uh, and then on September 14th, and I believe this conversation will be informed by the results of the survey, um, on September 14th at 1030 at St. Anne's in Stockton, so not very far for us, we're going to have a listening session and town hall conversation, I believe, from the results of that survey. It's still a little unclear, but it will be the, a conversation of moving us toward making that profile. I believe those are all the announcements I have today. Um, just a few for getting back. Do we have any birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations?
All right, we have some other things to celebrate. This is my most, well, that's a way to lead into it. This is most likely my last Sunday before I, my return oh, to Texas. Okay. Um, never more to roam a bachelor, but I hope <laughs> I've had such a wonderful time here at St. John's, and I'm hoping next summer when I'm here to introduce you to Mrs. Leachman. Oh, um, but my, my, my birthday is also the 27th. Okay. Oh, we have two birthdays on the 28th, and you are Jed. So, um, Jed is getting married. When is your? October 20th. October 20th. So, he has a lot of things he's celebrating, and we also send you off with um, prayers for good travel home and um, for your other accomplishments. Yeah. That was my birthday last week. Last Wednesday. So Jan had a birthday last Wednesday as well. 25, 50, 60, 65, 66, 67. <laughs> My birthday was Thursday, August 22nd. So 25, 50, 22. So we have a lot to celebrate. Um, both birthdays and transitions. So on the bottom, on the top um, of page nine, we have our birthday and anniversaries of blessings. <laughs> Let us pray together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them as they stand. Comfort them with courage and sorrow. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with St. John and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feed at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Why stand with my standing post in the unity of the Holy Spirit? To you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. You are many of one body, for we all share in the one bread. Here at St. John's, we take communion in two stations at the front. Um, you may come forward, we take the bread in our hand, and we sit from the cup. If you do not want to sit from the cup, um, please cross your hand, your arms, and we will know your preference and still give you the blessing of that. If you would like a blessing instead of taking communion, um, please just come forward and cross your heart, and we will know your preference there. We do offer a gluten-free option. We just ask that you take it out of the container instead of us because we have already touched the blood. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith.
not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who made us, who loves us,